Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Unfading Silence. I just want to talk a little bit about Elden Ring. So, I have just recently completed my first little run-through with Elden Ring. I think I'm roughly a little over, like, 80 hours into the game. And I have finished the game not 100%. I am still doing all the achievements because, let's face it, with Elden Ring, you want to be able to discover everything. There's multiple alternate endings to the game, and why not actually experience all the endings in itself? But I want to talk a little bit about why I did not want to play Elden Ring in the first place, and why I am actually enjoying Elden Ring even more so than games like Elder Scrolls Online and The Witcher. So with that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoy the little video and everything. I'm just going to have some video clips in the background and I'm just going to be talking relatively about what I actually enjoy about the game. There are things that I want to discuss about what I dislike about the game, but we are not going to be getting into that in this video in particular. And if you know the channel, you know who I am. You know I'm a very avid PvP player when it comes down to it. And at the moment, with certain exploits, certain broken builds, I'm not a huge fan when it comes down to Elden Ring PvP. But when it comes down to the whole PvE side of the thing, I am a huge fan, a much bigger fan of Elden Ring PvE than I am of any other games that are anything similar to this game. But with that being said also, I was never a huge fan of Dark Souls, and when I first seen the first trailer for Elden Ring when it first appeared, I was like, nope, I'm not going to touch that game. I dislike every Dark Souls game out there. I will never play Elden Ring. You will never catch me buying the game. I will never do anything for it. And uh, <laughs> to be honest, I have to eat my words on that because I did not realize how much I would actually enjoy Elden Ring when it comes down to like character creation. And let's face it, they have some really nice character creation and everything. You get to choose different races for your spec that you're actually going for. You can customize the look of your character. I've seen crazy videos out there right now on YouTube of people that look like Thor. They look like uh, Raiden from uh, Mortal Kombat. I've seen people that look like so many different anime characters out there just because of the way that they customize the looks and the different gear sets that they actually rock. So what I love about the game is that it is pretty much completely open world. There are areas that you can't go to, unfortunately. You know, you can't go for a nice little swim and everything like that. But hey, you know what? When it looks like the abyss gets extremely dark when you get a little too close to that edge of that ocean, you probably shouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it in real life. Why would you attempt to do it in Elden Ring? But also when it comes down to Elden Ring, with the guys who ended up designing this game... There's actually a lot of hidden details into the game. There's hidden walls, hidden jumps. There's different platforms that are invisible to the naked eye on the game and everything. And that in itself and everything is what makes the whole multiplayer experience fascinating. You can play this game in offline mode. And that is amazing as well. So you don't have to worry about getting invaded by random players having to worry about fighting multiple people when you're actually on a mission to be able to do like some side quests and things like that. But at the same time, when you actually engage in online play, there's little things that are going to be on the ground that will, you know, not necessarily tell you exactly how to complete a specific task, but at the same time, it will, you know, give you little hints, little details. Like, hey, there's there's a wall up here. If you hit this wall, a door is going to, going to appear, which is actually, like, really amazing. And I love the whole concept behind all that. And even when it comes down to, like, the gear and everything, I love the concept that you can put specific 
ruins or certain uh, abilities on specific item sets. Some item sets will already come with their little special abilities uh, tied into like the weapons and everything like that. But then there are times when you'll be able to uh, add specific things to specific items if there's that slot available if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i don't want to get into a deep dive about you know every aspect of elden ring in this video but if you want something like that in the future just let me know and i will definitely do a deep dive there are other channels that ended up breaking down stats gear weapons and so forth and i've actually subscribed to some of the newer elden ring channels just because they are avid Dark Souls fans, they are avid Elden Ring fans, and I love the content that they ended up putting out. They made playing this game and playing the first run through for me easily and accessible. And what I love about the community of Elden Ring as compared to like other games with like ESO is there's not a lot of spoils in this game. I know that some people want to enjoy the game. They want to see exactly how like the boss fight is actually going to go. They want to learn. They want to progress through the game. And they don't want to really get spoiled. I know when it comes down to like Elder Scrolls Online, there's specific mechanics for specific like bosses or builds um, out there and everything. And if you follow specific mechanics, it pretty much makes a lot of the gameplay easy mode. But when it comes down to Elden Ring, it's honestly a little difficult like because the boss isn't always going to move in the same direction granted the bosses will have the same mechanics in the sense of the same abilities that they end up using for skills but they're not always going to move left they're not always going to move right they're not always going to move straight towards you every single time you end up dying or you end up going into a different area for that boss and everything that boss might up and decide to charge directly at you as soon as you walk into the door. They might decide to stutter step. They might decide not to engage right away. Right away. Sorry, excuse me. But that's what makes this game extremely interesting. So it comes down to a skill base of the way you actually play the game. So are you good at playing the game? Are you good at understanding your character? Are you good at just being good in general i'm just kidding but there are other aspects of the game that help you out along the way and everything as you can see right now currently in this little uh video clip that i'm on currently there is a little mimic summon so what this mimic summon does is he spawns in and he is wearing the exact same gear as you the same armor everything so they can essentially go and fight against the boss and you can sit back and relax and let's face it even though there was a nerf recently when it came down to the mimic where it's doing a lot less damage it still is actually one of the best summons that are in the game and i like the fact that you can get different summons try different things different summons work for specific bosses or different bosses to help you along the way personally for me right now i love the mimic and i can't wait to be able to unlock other mimics as well or not mimics but other uh summons as well that'll help me progress through the game even further because even though i've already completed the game i still want to keep on going i want to be able to find everything inside this game i want to be able to explore different areas different zones um the map itself is huge if you remember when i was scrolling through the map earlier and everything there's multiple areas multiple zones but it's not just like in the top there's an underneath zone that's completely separated off the map and everything so this game excels when it comes down to exploring this it excels when it comes down to an open world actual game um even right here as i'm showing you guys like this right here is showing you little hints hey there's a little invisible thing that you're not seeing or you're seeing the little glow from it but hey just you know follow follow the attack pattern and everything and you are good to go um i love the fact that there is mounted combat in this game um for the longest time with uh, elder scrolls online and 
all of that, I have played that game roughly for around seven years. We have mounts in Elder Scrolls Online, but guess what? We cannot fight when we're on our mount. I have no idea why we can't, but we can't. But Elden Ring makes it possible for us to actually fight on the mount. And there are certain bosses where fighting on the mount will actually make it a lot easier for you as well. Um, even like the world bosses, I call them world bosses because that's what we called them in uh, Elder Scrolls Online, but like these little guys that are outside of like dungeons and things like that, that are just out in the middle of nowhere, like sometimes these guys are difficult as well. And I love the challenge of different zones, different areas I go into, and you don't know what's around the corner. Like there's times I think, okay, yeah, I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready to do this fight. Let's get this, and then all of a sudden, it's like I get smacked from the side, and guys just come out of nowhere. So it's like reaction time and speed and so forth. And to be honest with you guys, because I am enjoying this game so much, it really makes me wonder, did I miss out on actually playing Dark Souls games? I know that for the longest time, I did not really enjoy the combat experience of like, Dark Souls, I did not enjoy the combat experience when it came down to, um, what's that game called? For Honor. Um, I just felt like combat in those games were pretty slow paced. But when it comes down to Elden Ring, I love the combat speed. Um, especially for PvE. PvP is a little different. Um, like I said before, um, certain things in PvP at this moment are very broken with specific builds and specific sets and hopefully those get adjusted relatively quick or in the near future and even with things being adjusted even when the launch of the game took place there was a lot of broken bugs broken mechanics and so forth but guess what happened within a week it was fixed there was a patch they fixed it they dealt with the issues and that in, a, in its own right, is amazing. Completely and utterly amazing. Because anyone that actually plays Elder Scrolls Online knows for a fact if there are broken mechanics in Elder Scrolls, sometimes we have to deal with those mechanics, those broken builds, for months, if not years. Yes, I did say years. Because even to this day, there are still things in Elder Scrolls that have been broken for the last six years. Which is very sad because Elder Scrolls Online is a great game. It's another one of those games that is completely open world. They have their own PvP zone. They have their own uh, type of way you can actually do a lot of dueling. And if the producers, the directors, the staff of ZeniMax actually put forth effort like the guys do over in the Elden Ring franchise, ESO would probably stand above every MMO RPG game on the market. Also, Elden Ring is not an MMO RPG game. It is strictly just an MMO, or not an MMO, I'm sorry. It is strictly just an RPG game, but it has multiplayer access, which is wonderful. But if ZeniMax actually ended up doing that, things would definitely change in the direction of ESO and where it's currently located at. And it's not doing well, it hasn't been doing well, and it's still not doing well. So another thing that I actually liked was not only did they end up fixing the bugs and the glitches that were currently going on into the game at that moment, they also ended up adding new quest lines, new NPCs, and things like that. Things that other companies would determine this is going to be a brand new DLC. If we're adding new quests to the game, new NPCs to the game, to better the experience of your playtime, we're going to we're going to call it a DLC. We're going to have you guys pay for it. It's going to be around like, you know, 5 bucks, 15 bucks for the DLC. Or you play, pay a monthly uh, subscription fee to be able to have access to the DLC. What did Elden Ring do? No, they just released it for free, which is amazing. And I mean, that shows exactly where it's at. You know, it's it's like they ended up selling roughly around like 12 million copies within 
the first week of the game being released and everything. And Elder Scrolls Online did the same thing. But what did ESO do? ESO ended up doing a million reasons to play. So as soon as it was launched on console, they ended up doing a little giveaway. They said, log on between this month and this month, you have a chance of winning a million dollars. Awesome. Brought a lot of new uh, people to the game and everything like that. But at the same time, as soon as that event ended, they lost millions of subscribers in the software, the system, the lag, the broken mechanics, the broken builds were still in the game. What does Elden Ring do when there's things like that? They fix it. And then they offer just, you know, a whole new free uh, storyline with the game. So, good job, Elden Ring. I am enjoying this game so much. And I can't wait to actually see what happens in the near future with this game and its franchise altogether. I hope that they keep on releasing little uh, DLC increments. Um, I'm not really... Shouldn't really call them DLCs since they're not, you know, DLCs in its own right of, like, you have to purchase them. But, hey, every single patch, every single update, um, every now and again, if they end up adding new things to the game, I can't wait to be able to discover it. So, with that being said, you guys, if you have not tried Elden Ring, honestly, give it a try. It's actually an amazing game. It's fun to play. Um... Yeah, that's about it, you guys. So thanks for just listening to my uh, little rant when it comes down to Elden Ring. And I just can't wait to actually see what else comes about when it comes to this game in its whole. So thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>